Hi everybody, Lisa Larson here, Animal Communicator, and today we're going to be talking about 12 things that you can do to get over the loss of your animal. Okay, so hi, yeah. Today we're going to be talking about 12 things that you can do to get over the loss of an animal. I know this is really hard. I actually have this on a blog post, but I thought I would do this as a podcast video cast so that I can reach more people because, you know, it's it's just really, really hard when we lose an animal and we we're kind of we don't have the resources, we don't know what to do, and not everybody is understanding about how we're feeling. So I've got 12 things, and these aren't in any particular order, uh, so I'm just going to give them to you as, as I give them to you. But one of the things, the first thing, is to remember that your fur baby is always around you. Um, they're just not wearing their clothes anymore. You know, I mean, we think of animals as uh, animals and people as going off into some faraway place in the sky when they pass, but they don't. They're right here. They're they're just living in another dimension. It's just that they're vibrating so quickly that we can't see them anymore. You know, everything in the world has vibration. This chair has a vibration. It's just that these inanimate objects are very very low dense vibrations, um, we and animals are higher and spirit is even higher. So you, I, I've said this in videos before, you can think of it as, as a helicopter blade. You know how like you see it when it's going slowly, but you can't see it when it's going really fast. Well, that's how our animals are, you know? I, I mean, and, and humans, spirit in general, they're around us. They're around us. They can, you know, you can talk to them. If you talk to them, they'll hear you. Um, you know, when you're in certain spaces, you can you can even see them or feel them. But the problem is don't try too hard, you know, because when we try too hard, then we're 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 making our focus so narrow that we don't give them the opportunity. So just have faith that that you can see them, that hear them, that they'll connect with you. And sometimes they might come through as a song that reminds you of them or a smell um, or through things like butterflies or feathers or birds. For instance, if you've lost somebody and you see a butterfly and immediately you think of that that animal that you've lost, then there's a good chance that that, that butterfly isn't necessarily the animal, but it's the animal sending you a shout out. So, you know, think of those types of things, butterflies, hummingbirds, birds, feathers, all of those types of things. They are around you. Sometimes it's a little bit harder to, to understand or feel, but, but they are. And in dreams, you know, you can dream of them. I mean, somebody was saying the other day that she was having a hard time dreaming about her, I think it was a cat. And yes, it is hard if you're trying, but if you let go, and, and grief is a very low dense vibration, so it's hard for them to get through. But if you kind of let go and, and have the faith that they are around, then sometimes that's when you start to feel them more, you know? But, but if you think of them, they will feel your love and and bring that to you you know because it's like it's there it's where their consciousness is so it's uh, again i've said this in other videos but it's like walking into a room and you know say your friend joe is on the other side of the room and he's talking to some people and you walk in there and you see him and you say hey joe and he turns around and he says hey how are you doing and he comes over and he talks to you well that's kind of like how they are over there they're doing things but if they hear you thinking of them if they hear you talking to, to them or writing to them or whatever then they they are with you they you, you're catching their attention so that's that's the first thing so remember that that your baby is around um, the second thing is it's important to have some kind of memorial service. And this goes for both you and your remaining animals. You know, um, rituals are made for a reason. Rituals uh, impress upon what I call the coup. In Huna, I call it the coup, but it's basically the subconscious. It impresses upon the coup that something has changed. So it gives us not only an opportunity to say goodbye, but it gives us an opportunity for another door to open and say, okay, now that we're saying goodbye to you in this physical body, we now have the opportunity to have a relationship with you in your spirit body. And that means a lot 
to us and it means a lot to our remaining animals so make sure that you do this and this can be something very simple you can you know put a picture up of them maybe near their if you have their ashes or whatever put a picture up and light a candle um you know maybe read a poem i know that when my husband and i lost one of our cats we each picked picked a poem and we put a picture and we read it and we made sure the other cat was there so that he could participate and understand that we were saying goodbye um so you know and then there's one of the things that my husband does and i really like is he gets one of those prayer candles those ones with i don't know what they're called exactly but they're tall and glass and he will light it every night at the time that the animal passed until that candle is gone. So it's just a, a way of remembrance and anything that you can do to memorialize them, have a little altar or whatever. And that, that's actually my third, my third suggestion is creating an altar for a specific amount of time or for however long. Um, you know, we, we lost our cats in 2016 and 2017. It's 2023 now. And we still have their ashes with a little altar for them. You know, you can put, you know, a candle there, you know, especially initially you can put that candle there. Um, you can put their their favorite toys or leash or, you know, if it's a dog, leash, a collar. Um, and, you know, and like I say, you're at their ashes until you decide what you're going to do with them. Some people will keep their ashes now that the ashes come in in those really nice boxes. People are keeping them more. They used to come in this just like little metal boxes. So we would go and we would plant a tree and we would plant it under the tree. But now they even have boxes that are biodegradable so that if you wanted to you know, deposit the ashes in the ocean or, or bury them or whatever, it's the, the box itself will biodegrade. You have to ask for that, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's fairly new, but I think it's a great idea, but it is, you know, it, it's nice to have that altar that, that you've created a more memorial for them. And, you know, I, I noticed too, when I've talked to animals, in spirit, sometimes they bring it up. They may describe the altar to me. I'm not aware that they have an altar, but they'll describe something in the altar to me to tell the person I'm reading for. And it gives that person an understanding that um, that the animal is still around and sees what you've done, you know, and sees sees you honoring them. So that's, that's three, create an altar. Um, one of the things that you can do is create a memory shadow box. Now, these are expensive to get made professionally if you have the money that's great but you can also get the shadow boxes themselves and you can put their thing in there maybe a lock of their hair their favorite toy maybe they've got a little whoopee or you know something like that their collar anything that will memorialize them for you and um so you know that's that's something it's a project that can keep you focused and if you're kind of the artsy craftsy kind of person that might be a great a great thing for you to do so creating a memory shadow box number four of course you can go through your photos now if it's going to be different for everybody you know most times when i've lost an animal i immediately start looking at their photos but um when i lost makana who's on my book here um, I, I couldn't even look at pictures. It was so hard. He and I were so close. I mean, we love all of our animals, but some, there's just no words to describe how close we are to them. And that was him and I, but when you are able to, it's really nice to be able to keep yourself busy and have a project. You know, you can create a photo collage or, or an album with the pictures. You can do a video. Uh, after Makana passed, my husband created a video for him with a with a special song, and and it was like a video montage, and it was really meaningful. So you can you can get, create those books. You know, I mean, I, I know you can do it through Apple Books, and I'm sure things you know other photo places create books and stuff, and you can create them and put the put the pictures how you want them. Um, you can get um, a photo blanket or pillows made. We've had we've had those made. So we've got a blanket of one of my cats up above the, you know, we have high ceilings and we've got it up above the fireplace. So we always have her near. Um, 
You can have a professional painting or drawing done of them. Or if you're an artist, you can do it yourself. Again, I've never done Makana. I've tried a couple of times, but it's, it's, I am an artist. But it, that's just been a little difficult for me. I've done my other cats, some of my other cats. Um, but if you're an artist, you can do that, or you can have somebody, you can hire somebody to do it. It's really, that's really personal. And again, any of these things work for if you know someone who's lost an animal. You know, these are wonderful gifts that you can give to um, somebody who's lost an animal. One of the best gifts I got after Makana passed, oh, I, I just love this, it's to my bedside to this day. It was a, from a client of mine, a student of mine, um, a little keychain, a little um, crystal keychain with Makana's picture etched inside. Now, I don't use it as a keychain and, you know, carry it around. I just have it sitting by my bed. But it's kind of one of those things. I didn't know what it was when it first came, and I didn't even know who it was from at first. And I then all of a sudden, I looked it up in the sun, and I could see him through there. So that's a really nice. Any of these memorial gifts, you know, are great gifts for other people who have lost their animals to, to support them or doing it for yourself, just so that, you know, you have something. So, you know, going through your photos, there's so many things that you can go through your photos and do. That's number five. Um, you probably already, if, if you had your animal cremated, they probably offered you to make a cast of their paw. Um, so, you know, but if you're in a space where, you know, your animal is ill right now and, and you know that that's, the time is coming. We do, I have, do have videos about that that you can look at, but, you know, make sure that, you, you know, you know, either you can make it, you can buy things to make one or, or, but many places that do the euthanasia will make the paw prints for you now. Um, and you can put it in your shadow box, something like that. And we have it on their altar, but you can do it in the shadow box. Um, that was six. Make a cast of your fur baby's paw. Um, seven. You can plant a tree for your baby. You know, like I say, we used to go and bury the ashes, but either way, you know, even if you're going to keep the ashes, going out and planting a living tree or a flower or something, something that's, that's always going to be there and going to bloom and grow. And that's, you know, doing that in, in their memory is a really nice thing to have that's long-term, you know? So, um, that's number seven. Number eight is write in a journal. Again, like I said earlier, uh, if, if you talk to them, you, if you think about them, they can hear you. But if you write to them, if you keep a journal, they can hear you and it will bring them closer to you as well. But not only will it do that, it helps you get your feelings out. You know, you can you can write to them, you can write about them, you can write poems for them, you know, write anything you need to write, but, you know, that will make you feel better, but your baby will hear you. So that's number eight, write in a journal. Uh, number nine is you can create a website if you're if you're into um, computers and doing that type of stuff, you can create a website or you can create, you know, an Instagram page or a TikTok page, or I don't, I'm not on TikTok, so I don't know a lot about TikTok or Facebook. If you're on Facebook, not that I, you know, suggest anybody go on Facebook if they're not already there, but, um, or, or just a website for them, you know? I mean, you can start a blog, social networking page about your memories, you know, share your photos with other, other people who, you know, want to share their memories with you, you know? Um, so that's nine. You can create a website or social media for your babe. Number 10 is talk to someone who understands. Now, the unfortunate thing is not everyone understands how difficult it is when we lose an animal. And that's just how it is. And it's very unfortunate. But there are people that do. And understand that and know that and seek them out. You know, so you can join a pet loss support group. You can combine this with with uh, the last 
tip of creating a website or a social media site, you can create a, a pet loss website so that you can talk to people or find a pet loss website that you can talk to people. You, there are pet loss hotlines, um, forums online where you can connect with other people who are going through the same thing and, and um you know, and, 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 and think about, you know, that rainbow bridge, you know, there's, I know there's a website called rainbow bridge. If, if you've ever heard of that poem, I'm sure a lot of you have, but there's a poem called rainbow bridge. And it's about how our animals meet us on the other side of a rainbow bridge when we cross. So if you haven't, um, if you don't know what that is, just look it up and, and a ton of stuff will come up for you. Images, the poem, everything. It was written anonymously. Um, so that's talk to someone who understands number 10, uh, number 11 is one of my absolute, absolute, absolute most important things that I feel that you can do. And that is to buy yourself a squishy stuffed animal that you can sleep with and hug because I have had, um, animals tell me that they will use that animals in spirit when I talk to them, that they will use that as a surrogate so that they can feel you hugging them and you can feel yourself, you can feel hugging them when you hug that. And I like those squishy ones. There's, um, I get them from, sometimes I get them and send them to my clients who have lost pets and or animals. And there's some really cute squishy little panda bears that you can get at, um, Ikea for a really low price. And, and again, this goes for somebody, if you know somebody that's lost an animal, you know, send them, send them a little stuffed animal. I don't, it, it sounds silly because, you know, you, you kind of tend to think of that's just only for kids, but it's not, it's not. And it gives you a lot of comfort. So, you know, don't, don't let somebody tell you how that it's, that it's silly or anything like that. It is something that, that brings a lot of people, a lot of comfort. Um, and then the very last one that I have, number 12, buy yourself a squishy stuffed animal is number 11. Number 12 is, and you might be surprised by this, is not to get a new animal right away. You know, I just, there's a lot of people that will turn around the next week, next two weeks and go and get another animal, especially, and this is especially true if you have animals in the house. It's important for everyone in the household, both human and animal, to go through their own grieving process and get to a space of normalcy before getting another animal. Otherwise, it's not fair to you and it's not fair to the animal coming in, excuse me. <clears throat> and it's not fair to the animal coming in because no matter how much you think that you're not going to expect that new animal to be just like the animal that left, there's a part of you, if you haven't, if you haven't fully grieved, there's a part of you that will, and that new animal will feel that from you. So it's going to make it harder for you and that animal to develop uh, a, a really close relationship. If you're still grieving um, and expecting that, that, you know, expecting to have that kind of energy or that kind of those kinds of actions or behaviors. I mean, we may not think it consciously, but we do it subconsciously and animals really pick up that subconscious part of it. And also it's very important for the other animals in the house to not get them too soon because I mean, think of it, you know, it, it's, if you, lost your human child if you lost this child i mean you know how does it feel when you've lost an animal and somebody comes and says just go get another just go get another animal from the the, the pound or whatever you know it, as if you can replace that well it's the same thing for for animals even if they weren't that close it was still their sibling that they lived with and they are kind of confused. Your remaining animals are kind of confused about what's going on. And bringing a new animal into the house is, under the best of circumstances is difficult. Under the best of circumstances. But if you bring them in while an animal in your household is still grieving, 
that's really difficult because that animal may start to resent the new animal. They may re start to resent you thinking that you're just trying to replace their buddy. And and a lot of times people do this innocently thinking, oh, well, you know, Fluffy is is sad that that Fido is gone or whatever. Yeah, of course she is. But you know, just re trying to replace it with another animal doesn't work. It doesn't work for us. It doesn't work for them. So, you know, get to a place where everybody in your household is on the same page, you know? I mean, it's one thing if you've gone a while and, and you know, an animal just shows up at your doorstep or something, or you find them, you know, maybe maybe the animal that you lost is sending them to you. But, you know, as far as going out and getting them, just make sure that everybody is on the same page and everybody is ready for a new animal in the household. Because like I say, it's not fair to you guys, it's not fair to your remaining animals, and it's not fair to the animal coming in. So, and I've seen more times than not, you know, difficult situations when that's happened. So I hope this has helped. Um, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of things, other things that people can do to help get over this grieving process. And if you have something that you can share, please put them in the comments below. I'd really appreciate it as I'm sure my other viewers would appreciate that. And um, I, I appreciate you being here. Uh, you can find me at pausetalk.net if you want to talk to your animals in spirit. You can find my book, Pause Talking, A Course in Communicating with Animals, at Amazon in softback and ebook and at Apple Books in ebook. And um, if you're enjoying this, if you're getting something out of these videos, it would really help me a lot if you would hit that subscribe button and the like. And if you want to be notified of future videos, hit that bell. And um, I really appreciate you guys being here. And I hope this has helped. And again, I'm, if you're watching this, it's probably because you lost somebody. And I'm so very, very sorry for your loss. But I hope some of these things help. And, um, you know, just know that your, your, your fur kids are around you. Okay, thanks a lot. Till, till next time. Bye-bye.